Hello once again, it's Mr. Pete, your YouTube shop teacher. And today I'm backtracking just a little bit on what I'm doing. In a recent video series, I made this uh, float lock vise, as you recall. I think many of you made this as well, or are going to make it. But there's one particular part on here. I didn't want to take the time in the original video to show you how to do that. But I'm going to put a radius on the end of a rod, specifically this little part right here. So let's talk about that and get started. So there'll be some milling at an angle and some heat treating and then some turning on the lathe. Stick with me. Now looking at this part on the vise, you see how nice that rounded end or radius end looks? This is 5 8 diameter. Now you don't have to do it that way. You can put a chamfer on there or just hand file that for, the for that matter. But uh, let's have the challenge here of making a form tool to produce that. Now I've made several other videos over the years. Let me show you the titles of those that covered ball turning and uh, radii and different things like that. And there's a lot of different ways of doing this. Here's a couple older videos, tips 122 and 123. You can go back and look at those as well. So here's what we're making. This is a form tool and it will produce this nice ball end and this is a sample that I did and for that matter this is a sample too. Sometimes I have to do a lot of preparation work but you can see when we put this in the lathe we just feed the forming tool in and that will produce the radii or radius I should say of whatever uh, diameter or radius that you uh, produce here and that has to have clearance angles. This is tool steel and then it must be hardened and tempered all some fun operations. This tool is a rod end forming cutter by Severinsen. And I used this many years ago when I was in my prime when I was making those uh, micrometer teaching aids. But this is for a 3 16 rod. And these are kind of expensive. They are still available. Let me show you the catalog page from Severinsen. Severinsen is the brand and again that's what the cutter looks like and this is what it does. You're typically using it either on a lathe or a drill press and it'll just form instantly, almost instantly, that nice radius on the end of a rod and they're available in all sizes. There's the 5 8 I hate to think what that costs but I'm sure it's uh, $70 or more and we certainly wouldn't buy that for one single job and that's why I'm showing you another way of doing it. Well, as you can see, this is a 5 16 radius with the radius gauge. So how is that to be done? Using a 5 8 end mill, which of course is also a 5 16 radius, I'm simply milling the corner out. But it must be done at an angle to provide clearances. You probably can see from this view that it is an angle. If I can lay the square up against. So I've got about a 5 or 6 degree angle there. It doesn't matter exactly as long as you got some clearance. Probably the more the better, but I, I found that 5 or 6 is, is pretty good. But you can see, maybe not so much there, that there is an angle. I considered using a tapered end mill. However, the end mills go by degrees, whatever that is, doesn't matter, uh, not by the diameter. So even the diameter up here where I'm pinching it is smaller than 5 eighths. So that, that isn't going to work. But if you had the right size cutter, one that's larger in diameter, you could work in the area that is truly 5 eighths diameter, wherever that happened to be. Maybe you're not following me, but that's not an alternative here. So let's go over to the Bridgeport mill. Again, this is 3 16 thick, 1 inch wide. It could vary. It could be thicker. I will cut it off the length later on, and I'll show you the setup. Probably the easiest way to do this would be to tilt the head 5 degrees to the left, and then nod it also 5 degrees. But that's a real quick setup, but then you have to tram the head. Most of you know that I would rather 
take a beating then change the settings and tilt the head one way or the other so I'm going to approach it from a different method. I do not own a compound angle vise but I do have several of these little palm grin type tilting vices and that's already set for six degrees so that takes care of the angle in one direction and then the other way what I will do is take the the workpiece and tilt it like that also at five or six degrees and how am I going to do that? You could use a protractor, but I'm going to use these uh, angle blocks, and there's a five degree. I'd use a six if there was one. And then simply set that up in the vice jaws like that. And I'll actually have to set it on some parallels that are of the correct height, this being, I think, seven eighths. Like that, and with the work on top of it. This is a 5 8 end mill, and you can see now that the work is set up really at a compound angle, and for that matter, the angle block can be pulled out of there, otherwise it's probably going to vibrate out anyway. This is not a milling machine vise, it is just barely suitable for this, it, it lacks the rigidity, but it's the heaviest vise that I have that can be set at an angle. Again, I'll emphasize there's all different kinds of ways of making a setup depending on what equipment you have at your disposal. I used to do a lot of these at the high school simply by drilling a hole of the correct size, holding it at a compound angle on the drill press and it still worked okay. Off camera I took a very light pass here and that was strictly to locate the edge of the work and then I set the digital readout for zero. Similarly I took just a little bit of a cut right here where the pointer is set the uh, DRO for zero in the X axis so I'm just going to very slowly feed it in 312 thousandths this way and 312 thousandths uh, that way. This is tool steel. It's kind of tough going so I'm going to be working my way back and forth because it, it is a bit of a plunge cut which does not work really all that well. And that's what I've got on the digital readout. And there it is. Two or three minutes worth of milling and uh, the rest was all set up time. It's ready to take out. I think you can see the angle. Let me clean it up and it's ready for heat treating. I'm going to cut this off a little bit so that I don't waste so much material. This is kind of expensive, but make sure you use what amounts to precision ground flat stock, and this is oil hardening. And here it is before heat treating. Can you see the clearance? Also from this side. Fairly good finish. Remember it's only going to cut right on this top little surface. The rest is all just clearance, doing nothing but trying to stay out of the way. So you want it to be sharp here. Don't file or do anything that might alter that edge. I'm a bit ashamed of my setup. I'm outside because it's so hot uh, indoors, so I've got the furnace set up and it's been preheated. And this is a can of heat treat oil. Well, it's kind of windy out here, so that's a problem with the flame. I hope I got it hot enough. I couldn't find my good tongs.
Here it is after oil hardening. It seems quite hard. And next I'm going to shine it up just a little bit so that I can see the colors as I temper it. I want to get it about blue in color. That'll remove some of the hardness and uh, brittleness and make it tougher. There it is setting on a fire brick and I'm simply going to use the burns matic torch and slowly bring it into the blue color and quench it in water. Simple as that. I'm not going into any of the theory that's been covered in several of my other videos. And now I'm simply mounting it into this uh, tool holder. And make sure you get it exactly on the center when you set it up in the lathe. Not too much sticking out, you don't want it to vibrate. The 5 8 stock is set up in a three jaw chuck on the closing lathe. This, of course, is the actual tool that I just made set on center. I will bring it up. So it's touching like that using plenty of oil and just plunge cut it. Now there will be chattering and grabbing and all of that stuff because I'm cutting over such a wide area. But that's the nature of a form tool and I'm cutting at about 600 RPM. Pretty slick, was it not? And there it is. I could touch it up with the file just a little bit right here if I wanted to. Still got a little bit of a flat on the end there. But I'm very satisfied with the tool and the heat treat turned out just fine as well. Now that may seem like a lot of work to simply round off an end like that, but it makes it look so nice, doesn't it? And actually they used it twice here, once right here and once here, but then again most of it is even milled away. But you can see that their finish from the factory actually isn't even as good as mine. So we don't worry about a few machining marks, that's honesty in design and honesty in manufacturing. But mine is smooth as a hound's tooth. So there you go people, if you ever need to make a radius on the end of a rod, it's a pretty easy job. Probably could have done that all in about an hour uh, if I wasn't explaining things. I did both ends. This I touched up a little with emery cloth to blend it in. Again, there's a little bit of a flat there, but it turned out real nice. Well, this is Tubal Cain saying so long for now. Hope you enjoyed the video and can put this to use in your shop. So long for now.